feelings about frameworks. This is a framework based on my get up and go challenge. I created a soap framework. Thinking about frameworks today, Sharon Hornells from here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Today is day 1127 of me documenting my journey, coming online. I think I missed a couple of days when I was on a cruise. I did the video, but I didn't post them and I missed a Christmas day. Christmas day 2019, I was sicker than a dog. Not sure why we use that expression because dogs don't get sick that often. They just feel crappy, throw up and then move on. But uh, I was really, really out and sick in December of 2019. And I missed Christmas Day. I actually totally missed Christmas, missed New Year's. It was like not my favorite holiday season of all time, but it just is what it is. But I got to studying frameworks. And I've been studying frameworks all my life. I just didn't realize I was studying frameworks all my life because until I came in the online world, I'm not sure that anyone or I paid attention to. I'm sure somebody was talking about it, but I wasn't paying any attention to frameworks, frames of reference, how we look at things. Have I studied and read a bunch of books on different tools and strategies and frames of reference? Have I used a lot of frameworks in my life? Absolutely. I've used them for, for decades and I realized that Frameworks are a huge part of my life and everyone's life around us. Frameworks are a way of describing the processes, the systems, the habits, the rituals, the routines that we use to make our lives work, right? And I think the reason I wasn't seeing them or paying attention to them is I would learn them, but I never thought of them as a separate entity or as something I could install in my subconscious and I would get it to work automatically as a way of analyzing data and inputs into my life. Uh, on autopilot until last year when I started doing the get up and go challenge and I came up with a soap framework which was just the the four distinct processes and steps I go through when I am faced with a change or a challenge and I turned that into a, a framework for myself and for other people as well that makes handling change and challenges so much easier because we install the soap framework in our our subconscious and whenever we're faced with a change or a challenge which is pretty much every day I don't know about you but my life and my situation is pretty much changing and there's challenges and there's obstacles and there's problems and there's setbacks and there's things that require my attention absolutely every single day I suspect your life is probably the exact same way so I was thinking about frameworks today as part of the get up and go challenge day 28 today of our sixth 30 plus day get up and go challenge. And it started in February, February 1st we started, today was day 28. And we'll go three days into March because we'll do day 29, 30, and 31. And then I'm probably gonna even do a day 32. We'll do a live Q&A. If there's enough interest, we'll do a live Q&A to talk about the things and the frameworks and the strategies and the tools that we talked about and that we covered and we practiced throughout the 30 day challenge because it's fun to look at and ask questions about how different tools, different strategies, different frameworks could be applied to different situations, different areas or aspects of our life. Uh, so I personally, I am a framework lover now. I love looking for tools and frameworks that help us take all the information that we're fed from the world and from inside of us and from our past experiences and from what we're looking forward to as our future experiences, taking that information and understanding it by rolling it through a framework or rolling it through a series of steps or, or looking at it through a different lens, through a, a different frame, so to speak, than uh, just taking in all the real data and then letting our brain try to figure it out. That gets really hard. But if we have a structured way of getting a result that we want, then we just have to follow this system and then our brain focuses on each step of the system not on everything else that's going on in the world and for some of us where chaos is the normal state of our life and our our thinking frameworks are a really really powerful tool and they're very very helpful in organizing our life so that we get the results we want in a much more uh, calm and centered and structured way so today was all about frameworks and we talked about um, a life design framework by a lady named Phyllis M. Taylor. I am not familiar with her work except after the last challenge at the end of the year last year 2020. I did some research and some things as I was goal setting for 2021 and came across her framework and I thought it was really interesting because her framework 
sort of parallels the SOAP framework. And what we'll find as we look and we see and we learn other people's things, the more you read, the more you're exposed to, the more you experience, you will see that there's, there's a lot of different frameworks, but there's a lot of similarities amongst the frameworks. Those are the things that are really important. Those things that, that are in common, those, those universal things in what every area, every area or aspect of our life, every industry, every job, every career, there are frameworks that underlie and serve as the foundation of how that system works, how that business works, how our different industries work, how we as individuals work. We actually have a framework of how we work. Our framework is our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs, our actions, our reactions, and our body. Our body is an incredible consciousness facilitator. It lets us know the results we're getting. It shows us the results we're getting in the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual areas and aspects of our life. Those things show up in us, in our physical manifestation, in our body, in our health, in our weight, in our level of energy, in how happy or sad or, or upset or positive or negative we are. Those things, our body is a framework with which we experience and then communicate and share all of those things. So frameworks are on my mind today. Uh, Get Up and Go Challenge, of course, we talked about frameworks. The idiom for so, supersize your business today was don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I know I've covered that one in the past. I don't remember. I didn't look it up. I didn't go back to the previous time I covered it. And if I didn't cover that exact phrasing, I did cover something very similar it could have been two years ago now. I don't remember when it was, but I know that I, it was so familiar. I'm like, yeah, I've done this before. I've studied that. I've looked it up. I knew that it came from a German proverb. I knew that it was from about the 1500s. And if I remember things like that, that means I've covered it since I started doing and looking into idioms. I have, I have thought several times that I wanted to stop doing it as part of my Supersize Your Business group and page, but it's actually a really fun exercise in terms of getting me and others to think outside the box because a lot of these idioms and expressions I, we've never used in our real life. I've never in my life said to anyone, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, meaning don't discard something valuable while you're getting rid of something invaluable. Now, I, as I was preparing for that this morning, I'm thinking of all these examples in my life where I sure as heck could have used that expression. It might've been very powerful and people might've understood what they were doing, but I, I, I haven't used it. It's, it's an older expression that I've never used. Now, have I ever told people to not go to extremes, not overreact, get off the rampage, get off their soapbox, um, things like that? Absolutely, but I've never actually used the phrase, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, but we did talk about four things to do as you're building your business to make sure that you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, to make sure you are capturing your lessons learned, to make sure you are salvaging what you can from projects and people and resources and things instead of just being wasteful. Um, and then reminding us to never quit, to never give up, because the only way we can fail in growing and building our business and being successful is if we decide to quit, to throw in the towel, to, to let something or someone outside of us impact us to the extent that we just want to give up and quit and do something else. Happens every day, sadly, but uh, that's that's really the foundational thing is is be, re, be proactive versus reactive. Focus on solutions, not problems, things like that. Things I talk about every day. Our challenge today in our 365 day do one thing every day that centers you challenge was one that I choose not to accept. <laughs> now I'll do something instead, but we are supposed to color these teeny tiny little shapes and pictures on this. And I'm I'm gonna take a hard pass, given that I do everything through a magnifying glass or not at all. The, the thought of even attempting to color this stresses me out, which is the opposite of we want what we want when we're centering ourselves. So I decided, hard pass, not gonna do this, but I will think of something else that centers me and frees me because coloring doesn't free me anymore. If I have to color within the lines, I find that very, um, non-freeing, I find it very constrictive and I don't want to do it anymore. Why? Because my eyes are bad and I can't see between the lines. I've always loved coloring, but it's not a release for me or a, uh, a stress relieving activity for me anymore because of, all, and it's really interesting, my, my vision really tanked after uh, or before all of these nice, amazing coloring books came out. And I actually bought a few thinking, oh, I love coloring. This will be so fun. 
And I looked at them and I was like, they're kind of like puzzle books. I used to like to do word search puzzle books and things. And even the giant print ones, they just stress me out because it's hard to see the letters. And, you know, getting and doing everything through a magnifying glass gets really, really old. These are 10x magnifying glasses, which isn't necessarily enough for the things I need to want to do. And I'm, I want to save my, my limited vision for things like interacting with people I care about, being able to function on a... a verbal level and um, absorbing information that's that's something I'm really curious about or I'm really interested in or to, to find a solution to a problem or a situation. That's the kind of material I want to spend my eyes reading, not puzzles and games or coloring anymore. Uh, so we have to find other outlets, other ways of um, relieving our stress or anxiety or anything we might be feeling. And I do different things. I go for walks in nature. I hang out with my granddaughters because they always make me feel awesome. Things like that. So centering was uh, interesting. Yep, not going to do that today, which I don't say no to things very often. But I do say, no, I'm not going to do that specifically prescribed thing. But I will do something different that better suits me, which is sort of the whole purpose of the whole do one thing every day that centers you. It's to get to know ourselves and what works for us, what makes us tick. It's picking the tools and the and the strategies and the, the things that work from the get up and go challenge and only using the ones that work for you. And modifying even the SOAP framework. If, if you find a method that works better for you, install that in your subconscious and do that. Don't get locked into mine or anybody else's way of doing things. You have to figure out what works for you. All right, that is about all I've got today. I had a late start today. It's snowing outside. So whenever it's snowing, I hate to say that things outside me impact me and affect me, but they do. It does affect my inflammation and my uh, other things that I've got going on with me. So I just have to be a little cognizant of it. So I'm going to have some amazing warm coffee, which is actually ice cold. I'm going to go heat up my coffee. I'm going to see if I can't hold that little grandbaby and have an amazing day. I wish you the same. I'll be with you tomorrow to, to pop back on and share what I'm working on, what it, what's working, what's not, what I like doing, what I don't like doing. And I've been thinking about it lately. I'm coming at all of this online world from a very different perspective than a lot of people. And we can talk about that further if anyone's curious, but a uh, very different batch of experiences and desire of what I want to do with the online world and how I want to show up and who I want to be and what I want to become. We can talk about that another day. All right. Have a great day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.